Hey guys. It's Gareth with Creative Connors. Tonight, I want to take a look at Spike Mark 5. It's been out for a little while now, and it's got a bunch of great features. I'll put some links below for um, some more in-depth videos that we've done in the past, but tonight, I think we should really take a look at one feature in particular that you're gonna be super pleased with. We've done a lot of work on drive communication, which means really two things. It's easier than ever to set drive configuration parameters and do your auto tuning through SpikeMark. And the motion analysis, if you haven't seen it before, it is super cool and works really fast now. Christian's been working on this, and uh, I figured we might loop him in tonight, yeah? Yeah. And let's go ahead, dig into it and show the people what we got. It's gonna be great. Okay, so when you first dust off Spike Mark 5, you're coming up from Spike Mark 4, are there any changes you need to make? Yeah, so the first thing you're gonna have to do is you're gonna have to update the firmware, and then you're going to have to make a parameter change on the stagehand. And that parameter change now, I think that's really because we've changed some kind of timing settings and the speed at which. Yeah, yeah. So that uh, basically is changing the baud rate for the communication between the stagehand card and the drive. So let's see how this works. Yeah. First, we're going to click connect. And then if you'll notice down in the new drive, oh, yeah. you can now see it's going to tell you exactly what you need to do. So. Oh, look at that, that's super handy. So, a little help right where you need it. So, which parameter is it? Yeah, so we have a pro here. So, we're gonna do parameter 332, and we're gonna set that to the value of 384. And then once I've made that change, I'm gonna go ahead and press the E stop, and this will uh, reset the drive, so it'll take the new parameter. Now, in Spike Mark, we're gonna go ahead and uh, disconnect, and then reconnect. And now, if we scroll down, we can see before we even are able to scroll down, we already know that it is a Stagehand Pro. Oh wow, look at that. And that is, if you've used this feature before, my God, is this so much faster than it used to be. It's really incredible. When the drive faults, you can easily tell immediately what the actual drive fault is by clicking the fault history. And why would you have a drive fault? Like if somebody like yanked your cable out or something? <laughs> Absolutely, you lose the uh, signal cable, it's gonna complain that there's no more no encoder. No more encoder. And now you know. What kind of jerk would do that to you? And once you've reset your cable, you can now click reset drive and clear reset your the fault. fault. So another cool feature is you can change the drive's parameters right through spike mark now. When you gotta change a drive parameter, oftentimes you're sitting at the console and the drive's like up on the jump or down in the trap room and you gotta get up out of your chair and walk to it. Also, you gotta fiddle with that stupid little dial and buttons. Now you can just do it right through Spike Mark. Way more convenient. Yeah, it's as simple as pressing the drive config button. And the first thing you notice is- Look at that. It immediately reads in a bunch of parameters for you so you know what's currently set and then down the right hand side, you can make your changes. Uh, parameter nine for rated motor current. So anytime you're changing from like a five horse to a three horse or to a two horse, you're gonna have to set that parameter, right? Yep, another one is uh, parameter uh, 125. Ooh, that's nifty. Yeah, especially for turntables. Uh, <laughs> if sure. you are, if you wanna overspeed, if you want it to go faster, now it's as simple as changing it right here in Spike Mark. So if your drive's set for 60 hertz and you want to double that speed, you can set that to 120 hertz. Make sure you're only doing this on things that are, you know, capable of doing double speed. The other cool thing now is you can change the control method. So normally uh, we set it to full vector control. On pros? On pros. But if you want to do sensorless vector or if you want to put it into volts hertz, you can now make those changes with perimeter 800. Nice. And that's all available here. Yeah. Nice. So let's say we want to change a parameter. Let's say we want to set rated motor current to uh, six amps. It's as Punch simple it in. as, and then write parameters. Boom. And then as soon as it's done writing all the parameters, you can see it'll go back through and reread it in. So you can see if uh, what you typed 
actually changed, and you can see now it says six. That's great. You can also do your auto tune through Spike Mark. So you no oh, longer great. need to remember the crazy amount of steps, turning the PLC off, changing all your different parameters. Yeah, and then do you like then, the six finger button push yeah. to get it locked in. Yep. So, okay. So set it there. So I changed it back to 13. Uh -huh. And now the big red button for auto tune, it warns you you're going to do an auto tune. Yep. So be wary. And then you click yes. And then the drive will do all of those steps. It makes steps, all the chirpy chirpy noises. And it makes its noises. This goes a lot faster for apprentices. We'll cut some of this out. <laughs> I don't think we cut it out. <laughs> <laughs> Keep it rolling. Then once it finishes, it again pops back up and you can make any more changes you want to after that. Oh my gosh, this is so great. And it's so fast. I can't get over how much faster this yeah. is now. And super reliable. Yeah. Yeah, because I think honestly, if we're, if we're being truthful, um, this is bit was in Spike Mark 4, but it was A, slow, and B, a little flaky. And it is no longer either of those things. Yeah, it's, it's rock solid now. So then I think the coolest feature yeah. now is the analyze movement is actually useful. Uh, analyze movement is cool. Yeah. So what can you use analyze movement for? What it does is while you're running a queue, it will tell you the frequency, the current, and the voltage, the output While voltage, it's moving. While it's moving. That's and sweet. it graphs it for you over the position. So you can see if you're running into uh, a difficult like a spot in spike, your track. Yeah. And you'll notice because you'll see a current spike or something. Yeah. So the way you get there is any of your cues, uh, you click on the movement you want. So we have a chain motor here. So we'll click on our chain motor movement for not that one because we're already there for this one. And then there's this little graph button up here. And when we click that, this opens up the analyze movement window. And so it's as simple as you load the move and then you run the move. Nice, and this is running it just like it were a queue. Yep, and then once it finishes, as you can see, it pops right up with the date and the time you ran it. Nice. And you'll notice there's your graph. And one of the cool Look things is the graph is zoomable, so if you right click on it, you can zoom out and see your whole thing. All right, so what are, I see three different lines here. What am I looking at? Yeah, so your green line is your uh, frequency output. Okay. Your uh, red line is your current output, and your blue line is the voltage output. And if you drag the mouse across, you don't have to click, you just move your mouse across the green line, you can see that the cursor moves or the line moves yeah. with the dots, yeah. and up in your right-hand corner, you'll see that it uh, tells you the exact position it was at. Yep. So in this instance, we're at 7.37 inches. Yep. The frequency output was 60 hertz. Yeah. The current output was 10 amps, and the voltage output was 4950 volts. I think this is super helpful, and there's two things that really strike me about this. One is that, of course, like you mentioned, you get your current output. So yep. you can see, are you overloading the motor at any point during the move? Because yep. if you're a 13 amp motor and you're hitting 20 amps, hey, you got problems. You need right. to take a look at that. But the other thing that's really super helpful, I think, is seeing the frequency graph. Because I would say, maybe not the most common problem, but a common problem we get from folks is that they are uh, unknowingly trying to program a move to go faster than the machine is capable. Yeah. And so if you see that green line head up to max hertz, whatever your max hertz is in your drive config, yep. Yep. and just stay there through the move, you have programmed a move to go faster than it can really go, because it's just flooring it at that point, right? Right, and especially also while you're messing with your tuning, yeah. so you can see it. You know, you can't increase the proportional gain anymore. It just can't go faster. <laughs> it can't go faster. That's it. I'm giving it all she's got. Yeah. Cool. The other thing is you can have multiple of these open up oh, at the same time. Nice. So you can run between your two cues. So I just opened up the, and then the other one is still here. Yep. So I just opened up the previous queue so I can run it back to there. And this is the down move. Okay. Yep. And again, same thing. And got it. Zoom out. And there it is. But so now we can go ahead and we can run our up move again. Yep. The other thing to point out is as it's running, you can get live what it's actually doing. Yeah, very cool. 
but then okay. it's as easy as you just. Oh, and so it just makes a list of all the times that you've done this analyze movement. Yep. So you could run it a bunch of times, put more weight on your machine, run it again, see how that's comparing to a no load situation, yeah. yep. all that stuff. Try running it at regular nameplate hertz, overspeed it, see how the thing's changing. Exactly. You could, I don't know, analyze the movement. It's almost like it's right in the name. <laughs> it does what it says on the tin. That's awesome, man. So analyze movement seems pretty awesome. What about if you got a bunch of grouped motors? Does it work for that? It does work for groups. Oh. Uh, so it's basically, it's the same thing. Uh, there's just one more list box with the specific motor from the group. So when you run it, it runs the entire group queue. It doesn't just run the individual move. <laughs> it's all the motors in the group run the move, but then you can select which motor and and see the and graph. See the graph. Yep. Very nice. So you can see, kind of bop through each motor in that group and see how the current is from motor one to motor six or whatever. Exactly. Yeah. That's awesome. Very cool. Okay. I think that gives us a really good tour. Thanks so much for sharing it with us. Yeah. And thanks for doing all this work, man. You've made I'm the drop. It's done. <laughs> Absolutely. And we can't wait for you guys to get your hands on it. Check it out and uh, bask in the glory of analyze movement, drive configuration, and remote auto-tune. Yeah, it's great. See you next time.